Some of y'all don't realize just how big DFW is. What is it? Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex area that I live in has like seven and a half billion or million, I'm sorry, seven and a half million people living here. It's a large area. Very, very large area. A lot of people and a lot of land too. I want to say it's the largest uh, or one of the largest uh, metroplexes in the country <clears throat> as far as land size. Now the reason I bring that up here talking about um, stories at you know as it relates to lawn care one of my uh, experiences I had a couple of years ago uh, which would end up actually being my second worst time uh, my second worst day in lawn care bear with me here as I tell this story I'm uh, unloading my equipment here from the afternoon route so I um some years ago I uh, was help, uh, I was uh, helping a guy out with some properties. Now, um, this was back when I was still doing uh, maintenance work, and uh, I was a uh, facilities manager at a, uh, at a college, at a local college here in the area at the time. But uh, I had a good friend of mine. Um, he's still a friend of mine. He's uh, you've you've actually seen him on my channel before. But uh, he was at the time was working for a company. A landscape company that did all the uh, maintenance for a lot of these, uh, a lot of these Army Corps of Engineer. Um, uh, how do I say this? Uh, pr a lot of these properties, like these lakes that are around here, because DFW has about three or four, you know, lakes that are man-made lakes. You know, I know well. They, I know they have at least two, but they have a lot of these lakes. You know, man-made lakes that are pretty big and they're maintained you know they're they're operated and owned kind of by the uh managed i guess is a better word they're managed by the um army corps u.s army corps of engineers well this company that my friend worked for had the contract to do all the maintenance for this for these particular um uh, lakes and um included in that was you know keeping around the lakes and the properties but also there were there were like dams and water you know water substrates and things of that nature that you know had to be had to be kept up so on one particular instance for whatever reason their uh their company was having a problem finding people so he was there they were short on manpower so he him and one other guy were basically being told to go out and do maintain all of this uh all of this infrastructure, all these, all these uh, grounds, grounds, you know, all these maintenance grounds on these great lakes and these, um, these great, these lakes and these dams, you know, and these man-made uh, things here in the area. And it, they just, they couldn't do it. They couldn't keep up with it. It was just so, it was so demanding and so much work. Well, what he ended up doing was he ended up basically trying to get a hold of anybody he knew friends family or whatever who was you know able willing and able to work and could you know operate equipment and knew how to do lawn care and um so i was one of such person that i uh went out there i won't tell you where which one in the area that i went to but i went to one of the uh one of the lakes and one of the dams in the area here, and I uh, worked for a day. And it was, uh, it, it was not anything like residential lawn care or even commercial lawn care in terms that I've been used to doing as far as, as, far as maintenance goes. It was, it was, it was brutal. It was, it was bad. It was, it was middle of August, so it was 100 plus degrees out. It was on a Sunday that I helped him out out there. And just because of the way it was done, because of the, the uh, site conditions, you know, I couldn't wear anything lightweight, basically. Everything had to be heavy duty, so I was wearing thick jeans, you know, to protect against road hazards and, you know, thick, thick boots 
over my feet and, and you know up my they went up to like right here on my ankles thick boots and um what we were doing he he had himself and me and one other guy there and we had to cut um we had to weed eat along this road path this roadway that was going over this dam with the lake you know on either sides on either side of the dam and we had to and there's a road that goes over that the cars drive by a two-lane road and uh we had to weed whack along the roadside while this other guy was on the zero turn the skag it was a skag uh, turf tiger i believe he was on the zero turn mowing mowing the larger areas along the roadway and when i tell you it was nothing it was nothing like you know, doing lawn care for a house or for even for a business. I mean, it was nothing like that. The, I'm used to doing, you know, I'm used to doing a certain professional job and, you know, not missing things and doing, having good, you know, quality. This, this was not that. This was basically just cut it down and it doesn't matter if you miss things, you know, just, just get it, just run over it, you know, because we're having to walk fast. We're walking as fast as we can walk, you know, trying to get this, because this stretch was, man, it was a couple of miles. It was a couple of miles long that we had to walk and trim and mow this part. And uh, it, we had water, you know, and we were, he, he had a backpack with him that had water in it. And um, he had some two-cycle mixed gas for the trimmers, and he had it in a uh, Powerade bottle. That's actually the reason I'm, I'm doing this video today. I got inspired to, to tell this story by um, a video that another guy on YouTube, um, Cut, a, Cut a Squad Joe. This video's for you, because I saw your video about the, uh, uh, fuel, the fuel trick for the two-cycle gas, mixing, it, mixing the excess in a uh, Powerade bottle. And I thought of this story because that seeing that Powerade bottle, that was exactly what uh, what this guy had with him, and that's what, exactly what we used uh, to refill the trimmers because we had to refill them, you know, a couple of times. So we had a couple of those bottles in his backpack along with bottles of water to drink. And uh, <laughs> he, uh, we were going along there, and he takes the bottle of water. He, you know, he's drinking a bottle of water. And he throws it over his shoulder down the down the ravine, you know, down the down the uh, hill, and I'm like, what? I'm like, man, you're littering. You can't litter like that, you know. And at first I said that, but I'm I'm not even I'm not even joking. By the by the time about an hour went by, I I didn't even care, you know. I was just throwing, just heck with it, throwing the bottles down. Heck with it. Doesn't matter. It was so. It was so hot and so so brutal and so, you know, it's a it's a road stretch. So you got the asphalt right there, and the asphalt and the concrete are hot. There's no shade because it's all you know a man-made structure that's open. There's no shade of any sort. There's cars constantly driving by that you know are moving, and you know you, you're constantly worried if you're going to get hit or something. It 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 drained me. It, it really did. I, you know, I, I said, I said to myself after that day, I said, I will never, I will never talk shit about guys on the side of the road picking up trash or guys on the side of the road doing like, uh, doing the highway maintenance and whatnot like you see on the interstates. That, that is some brutal work. That is not, that is nothing at all like, like uh, doing lawn care for a property, for a residential or even a commercial property. Oh, it was bad. It was bad. We did, we did a couple of miles stretch of this and uh, it was probably about four o'clock, five o'clock, something like that. And uh, I mean, we were, I mean, we were burned up. We were burned up. I had, uh, I had parked my truck at the, uh, about a couple of miles away at this entry so we had to um he had his truck up at the front and i don't remember how we got back to my truck actually i i it was so i was so heat exhausted from that i i don't re actually remember how i got back to my truck um the third guy 
the guy that was on the mower, he got done um, a little bit before us, and we uh, we found him. We we saw the mower sitting there by this old abandoned gas station, and we were like, "Where'd he go?" We didn't know where he was. We were we were kind of, you know, or at least I was a little bit delirious. You know, we didn't know where he was exactly. He uh, he was behind that gas station, just throwing up everywhere. Just it was. It was bad. He he had a he had a bad case of he had a pretty bad case of heat exhaustion. I uh <laughs> I got in the truck and drove home and I mean I I I don't really remember how half of that drive home. <laughs> I was just I was probably all over the road at some points, you know, from being from being so hot. I got home and I got home and took a shower and I laid down and I, I think I slept like the rest of the night. I don't think I even woke up for dinner till the next day. It was, oh, it was bad. I didn't know how, I don't know how he did that every day for a couple of years. That was his, that was his life for a couple of years. And uh, man, it was bad. But it was the one and only time I did it. I said, I can't do this kind of, this kind of thing again. You know, I can't, can't be out and out in this this is i ain't used to this i mean i maybe i would have gotten used to it if i'd been out there longer you know and done it more than one day but man brutal that kind of stuff burns you up oh so that's my uh that's my second worst day in lawn care it wasn't bad you know it wasn't worse than the time i got stuck because you know nothing was really at stake just you know little bit of heat exhaustion but it's not like I almost lost all my equipment or anything but that was my second worst experience and uh, luckily I don't ever have to go back there <laughs> except for visits sometimes <laughs>